Hey guys, welcome back for another Razor Chroma lighting design video. This video is going to be a Halloween themed design. And what we have for this design is a really cool line type effect that uses Halloween themed colors such as orange, purple, and some black. You even get a little bit of green with a ripple effect as well as a really cool looking lined audio meter that I created. So it is a really cool design to have in your guys' gaming setups this holiday season. As always, there will be a link in the description below Below, where you can go to my website and import them for your devices. But if you want to learn about Razer Synapse and maybe learn how I made this design from scratch, then you're gonna wanna stay tuned. Also guys, I do have a giveaway going on on my Twitter profile, so make sure you guys go to my Twitter and check out how to enter in the giveaway. I'm giving away a Razer Mamba Elite gaming mouse and it's a really good addition to add to your guys's chroma setup if you guys don't have a chroma mouse already so be sure to go and check that out and please don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoy the content and you're gonna want to hit that subscribe button for future keyboard lighting designs we're gonna get right into this one this one is halloween lines <laughs> All right guys, so starting with a brand new design, brand new effect in your Synapse Studio window. Click on these three dots and click on this add button right here to create a brand new profile. We're gonna start off first thing by selecting these three dots next to spectrum cycling here, and we're gonna change that to a wheel effect. And with the wheel effect selected, we're gonna grab this spinning green dot right here, and we're gonna just drop that right at the bottom of our keyboard. Next, we're gonna double click on any of these keys and then you'll see it'll highlight all of the keys that have this effect on it. We're gonna click on our color drop down. We're gonna choose this five node pattern right here, so the yellow and green. And we're gonna leave black on the first, third, and fifth nodes here. The second node, we're gonna make white, so use six Fs as a hex code. And we're just gonna drag down this gradient bar to a really dark white or kind of gray color, just like this. So my hex code is 1C, 1C, 1C. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that into my fourth node here. So select that green node and we're gonna highlight this hex code and just paste in that 1C, 1C, 1C. So you have a black, gray, black, gray, black color gradient for this design. We're gonna click off of that and now I'll hold control and scroll wheel in here so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, it's mainly black with a little bit of gray and this shows up a lot more on your keyboard than it does in the Synapse program. And that's all we're doing for this first layer. Next, we're gonna click on the wave layer right here and we're gonna add a brand new wave effect. With this new wave effect selected, we're gonna select all of the keys on our keyboard just like this and we're gonna click on that color dropdown, and we're once again going to choose this five node pattern right here, just like this. We're gonna click on this green node, and we're gonna drag that all the way to the middle node right here like that, and we're gonna make it invisible. This last node right here, we're gonna hit the delete, the trash can, and just delete that node. Now we're just working on the left side of this gradient bar. This very first node, we're also going to make that invisible, we're gonna grab this yellow node and drag it all the way over here to the left. And we're going to make this node orange. We're gonna select this black node right here and we're gonna delete that one. Select your orange node again and we're gonna hit this addition symbol. It's gonna just copy that node and then we're gonna drag that over. Okay, now we're gonna select this first orange node again and we're gonna hit that addition symbol but we're gonna change this to a purple color. And this purple color, we're gonna need to kind of remember the hex code on it, or you can come back and copy it later. So we're just going to uh, click in this color box right here, and we're gonna choose a purple color that we want for our design. So here, I like this purple color, it looks pretty good to me. Click on this hex code right here, and we're gonna copy that. And my hex code is eight alpha two eight foxtrot foxtrot so now that we have this purple node in here we're going to drag that over here to the left we're going to hit this addition symbol which is going to copy that one and we're going to drag that over to the right side so you got three nodes over here on the left three nodes over here on the right click on this purple gradient or this purple node again 
hit that addition symbol, and that's gonna put a brand new node right between these two. And it's also going to be purple. We're gonna select this node just to get our color right here. And we're gonna just drag that to a dark purple. So that's all we're gonna do for this gradient bar. We're gonna click off of that. And now we're gonna tweak the properties just a little bit. We're gonna drop our speed down to 10. We're gonna leave our angle at 90. We're gonna leave our width. We're gonna choose our split option. And that's all we're gonna do. And we're gonna hit save. So that looks perfect right there. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold control and we're just gonna start deselecting some rows. So I'm gonna deselect my top row right here. I'm gonna deselect my third row right here and we're going to include this elongated button right here on our num pad. We're gonna deselect our second from the bottom row right here as well. And this time we're not going to select this elongated key here. Okay, so we've deselected those keys. So with these remaining keys selected, we're going to click on our color dropdown and we're going to click on our orange node right here and we're going to change this orange node to that purple that we had. So we're gonna control V to paste in that purple. Same thing with this orange node, we're gonna control V to paste in our purple design. So we've replaced the orange nodes with purple. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna replace the purple nodes with our orange. So we're gonna click on this third node right here, change that to orange, click on this fifth node, and we're gonna change that to orange. And now we have this darker one here in the middle. We're gonna change that to orange as well, but we're going to make a really dark orange this time. We're gonna select off of our color picker here. And the only thing we're gonna change in our properties with this one is our angle. And we're gonna change that to 270 degrees. So that just changes it to go the opposite direction. And that's all we're doing for this. We're gonna hit save. So there you have it. That's how you make the main lines portion of this design. Now we're gonna get into the ripple effect and how I made that. So down on the bottom left, let's select our ripple to add a brand new ripple layer. And with this new ripple layer selected, we're going to select all of the key options on our keyboard. Actually, if you have a Huntsman Elite keyboard, you can choose the side lighting on this as well. And we're gonna click on our color drop down here and we're gonna choose the single node pattern. And the single node pattern, we're going to keep it green actually, but I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker green just cause I don't like uh, super bright colors. If you wanna keep it bright, go ahead, keep it on your keyboard, bright green. It's all personal preference. So with this green color, I'm gonna click off of my color picker and I'm actually gonna drop my width to 100%. Now, I don't like my ripples to go off on my mouse press, so I always change my start to on selected keys. So I want it to start when these selected keys are pressed, and I want it to end after one time. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit save. Also with all these keys selected, I would like to drop my speed down to seven. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit save. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold control and I'm gonna deselect half of the lighting zones that I have selected right here. So what I do for this is I just start on the second row and I start deselecting every other key. So here I've selected about half of my lit key options and all I'm going to change with this is my speed so I'm going to drop that down to five and by having two different types of speeds for a ripple effect it kind of creates a scattering ripple that looks quite a bit different and kind of fits the Halloween theme so now when you press a key as you can see you kind of have like a scattering type ripple effect on your keyboard and now last but not least for this lighting design, I did a audio meter effect. So we're gonna add an audio meter by clicking the audio meter layer. And with this audio meter layer selected, we're going to choose our all of our key lighting options here. And first thing I'm gonna do is adjust my properties here. I always move mine to 1.5 and this time I'm just gonna leave the decay just set at one. I'm not gonna touch it. And I leave the auto box unchecked. And this is just what works best for me on my keyboard. Depending on what levels of audio you use, you may have to tweak this a little bit to get uh, your preferred visual for your audio meter. So with these properties, I'm gonna click on my color dropdown. We're gonna choose this two node pattern right here, the black and green one. 
And now what I'm going to do is on this right node right here, I'm going to paste in my purple color. So we got that purple color in here. And on the left node, I'm also gonna paste in that purple color, but I'm gonna drop this down to a darker purple, all right? And now I'm gonna drag this all the way up at higher audio levels. And what this color gradient right here is saying to you is that at lower levels of audio, this design is dark. And as audio increases, it continues to stay dark until it hits a certain point and then it turns brighter purple, all right? The whole keyboard will light up brighter purple at higher audio levels. And now we're just gonna work our way down the keyboard. So I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna deselect the top row, just like that. And now I'm gonna click on my color gradient and I'm just gonna drag these down the gradient bar just a little bit. So I drag those down a little bit. I'm gonna hold control again, deselect the next row, click on my color gradient and just drag them down a little bit more. Same thing, hold control, deselect my next row, click on my color drop down, drag them down a little bit. Hold control, deselect the next row, click my color gradient, drag them down a little bit. Hold control, same thing, color gradient, drag them down a little bit. And now that we're done with that, you've actually completed the audio meter, but we're gonna turn three of the lines back to orange. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to double click on the second row here, and it's gonna highlight that whole second row. We're gonna click on our color dropdown. We're gonna make this purple node orange, and we're gonna make this node also orange, but this first node we're gonna make a darker orange. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this hex code that we use for our dark orange. We're gonna copy that. Now we're gonna go up two rows and we're gonna double click on that key and that's gonna highlight that row. Click on this color drop down. We're gonna paste in that dark orange over our dark purple. We're gonna click on our purple and we're gonna make it orange. Click on our very top row, double click on that, select all those keys click on our color gradient, we're gonna paste in our dark orange, and we're gonna make this purple node orange. And that's all there is to the keyboard lighting design for this video. Now I'm gonna go through and do my peripheral lighting. I'm first gonna go back to my lines layer, and I'm going to click on this uh, first row here, and this is my orange. I'm going to hit Control C on that, and I'm actually going to highlight these bottom two rows right here, and I'm gonna paste that orange design in there. Um, I'm actually gonna hold control and paste it into these two up here as well. But I wanna make it different from my keyboard slightly. So I'm gonna click on my color drop down, and I'm gonna change my hex code on my first orange node to end with a one. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the purple. Click on a purple row, Control C to copy that, and I'm going to select this row of lighting, and I'm also going to select my top portion of my keyboard as well. And I'm gonna hit paste in there. So that pasted the purple, but once again, I'm gonna make this separate. Click on this color drop down, change the last digit on my hex code from an F to an E. Now that 100% completes my keyboard. Now I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna begin to scroll out and then I'm gonna hold control and press zero on my keyboard. That will center all of your lighting zones or all of your peripherals to be in the middle of your screen. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go through and I'm going to edit all of my peripherals. And I do this really quick by basically just copying what I've already done. So, so with my lines layer, I'm going to copy the orange row and I'm going to paste that into my mouse pad over here. So just like this, I'm gonna paste it. But now you can see by pasting that in there, I've messed with my keyboard lighting design on my orange, you can see how it does not um, 
it's only going one direction and it's not splitting in the center of my keyboard anymore. That's because it's trying to include my mouse pad as well. And to fix this, you just have to separate the lighting between your mouse pad and your keyboard. And you do that by um, keeping just your mouse pad selected here and going to your color nodes here and making this effect different than the other one and you can do that just by changing the last digit of a hex code on your color gradient and it makes it different than the other effect that's on the keyboard so now you can see the orange on my keyboard is now working properly again and it's splitting right in the middle of the keyboard so we do this anytime we replicate or copy this effect from our keyboard and we're going to do the same thing with the purple click on a, a purple row copy that effect we're going to select all of the lighting zones on our firefly that don't have an effect and we're going to paste in that purple click on our color drop down click on one of our color nodes and change the last digit by one value so it changed it from an f to an e and we'll hit save so now our firefly is completed we're going to do the same thing copy our orange row we're going to select the left side of our basilisk and we're going to paste in that design. Instead of changing a hex code, we can make it slightly different by changing the angle. And I'm going to go vertical on this because it looks really good on the side of your mouse. Uh, and I'm going to go up to zero degrees on this one. On the side of your basilisk, you can see you have a split wave that is on the side of your mouse. Same thing with the right side. We're going to select a purple effect this time. And we're gonna paste that on the right side and we're gonna change this angle down this time at 180 degrees. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this orange portion of my Firefly and I'm gonna paste that onto my scroll wheel of my Basilisk. And for my Razor logo on my Basilisk, I'm gonna select the purple and I'm gonna paste that onto my Razor logo as well. So for the rest of my lighting zones or the rest of my peripherals that I have, I'm going to add a brand new wheel effect and I'm going to leave this spinning green circle in the middle of my area here. And I'm gonna select all of my lighting zones that don't have an effect on them at the moment. And I'm gonna click on my color dropdown. I'm gonna choose a five node pattern right here. Uh, this yellow, and green node I'm going to make invisible. My first node I'm gonna make orange. My last node I'm gonna make orange. And this middle node I'm gonna make purple. So you can either find a purple one in there or you can paste in the purple color that you had previously. And now I'm gonna click off of my color picker and everything looks good to me, I'm gonna hit save. So now you should have lighting on all of your peripherals as well as a really cool lines profile on your keyboards. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you guys don't miss out on future Razer keyboard lighting designs. I definitely recommend that you guys also follow me on Twitter and or Instagram because I'm always uploading teasers of upcoming lighting design videos as well as some other Razer content that you guys don't wanna miss out on. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.